Hello, Obi. Thanks for having me back on the Salvation Links. I know that you're doing a lot of good and you're helping a lot of people get to know what God wants for their lives just through your ministry at the Salvation Links. Thanks for having me on again. Today, we're going to talk about God's grace. Grace is one of those things people don't understand. They either think it's too weak or they treat it like it's a get out of jail free card. People can do whatever they want, they can live their lives their own way, and grace is going to take care of things and get rid of their sins. Well, that's not the way that the Bible really presents the idea. There's an unlimited amount of grace, but grace changes who we are. When we understand grace, when we start applying God's grace to our life, it changes who we are. It changes what we're eager to do. It changes how we live our lives. In Titus chapter 2, the Apostle Paul was saying to his friend Titus, it was literally he wrote to his friend, and he said, the grace of God that brings salvation to, has appeared to all men. That means all of us can see the grace that came in Jesus. That grace teaches us. It gives us an education. It teaches us to say no to ungodly and worldly living and to live self-controlled, godly, and upright lives while we wait for the blessed hope, that great and glorious appearance of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then he goes on from there. He talks about how Jesus died. Jesus gave himself up to redeem us, to rescue us, and to create for himself a people who are his very own, a people who belong to Jesus, who are eager to do what is good. Before we knew Jesus, before we understood grace, before we decided we were going to follow Jesus, we did things that pleased our flesh. We did things that pleased us. Those things hurt other people. Those things made us foreigners and enemies of God. But now, now that we're surrounded by grace, now that we're living under grace, now that we're applying grace to our lives, that grace teaches us to live our lives different, to make different choices, to be eager to do the things that are good, right? To be people that are Jesus' people, that look like Jesus, that act like Jesus, that remind others of Jesus, right? That's what grace is supposed to do. You know, people can take drugs, fertility drugs, because they want to have children really, really bad. You don't take God's grace unless you want to have what God's grace is designed to produce in your life. God's grace is designed to produce change. God's grace is designed to produce faithfulness. God's grace is designed to produce thankfulness in your life. And if your life's not full of that stuff, then you need to focus on grace, but you need to focus on grace God's way, not the world's way. The world talks about grace and they, we call it cheap grace because that's not God's grace. God's grace changes us from the inside out. God's grace empowers us to live the new life. God's grace does cover over every sin we make, but those sins are the sins not of, of deliberate rebellion, not of, oh, gee, I'm just going to do whatever I want, and God's going to have to forgive me anyways. Right? Don't try to be a legal lawyer with God. That just doesn't work. But God's grace covers over every mistake we ever make. Because we need that. You know, nobody lives a perfect life. If God's grace only applied for a day or two, we wouldn't make it. Because we need that help every day. Every day, your best day as a Christian, your best day as a part of God's family, you still sin. So you need the grace. But the grace is not a get out of jail free card. The grace is part of the power of God that changes our hearts and our lives from the inside out.